Hi, welcome back to Happy Apple Core Homestead. Today we're going to make a ginger tincture. I have some ginger here that I bought from the store. I don't grow it here, it does better in tropical areas, but I have heard that there are some people in zone 8B that grow it well. I haven't tried it yet, um, so I just grabbed some from the store, and that's okay because this is something that I really want in my medicine cabinet. The first thing we're going to do is pop over to the sink, give it a good scrub, and then we're going to go over here behind me, I have my Cuisinart food processor, and I'm just going to shred it up. I'm not going to peel it. Some people do. I'm not going to. It's totally not necessary. So once I get it scrubbed and um, shredded up, I will meet you back here for the next step. See you in a minute. Okay, it's all shredded up. That's what it looks like. You don't have to do this. You can just chop it up if you want to. It might be easier. I like it this way, um, but it's up to you. You can just do a little chop or you can shred it by hand. This is just like, it takes two seconds. All right, what you need is a sanitized jar. I brought out two because I wasn't sure if I was gonna need more than that. You want approximately a one-to-one. -one. So 50% fresh ginger root and 50% 100 proof vodka, which is what I have here. Um, I don't necessarily buy like the most expensive 100 proof vodka, but I try to get in the middle and you know, something that's affordable, but something that tastes good. Uh, I don't want I want something that tastes nasty because this is already going to be really hot and spicy. Uh, so you're just going to put the ginger root into the jar. Okay, this one is just over half full, so I'm going to use my second jar. tidy up my mess and then I'll be right back. Now that my workspace is a little bit more tidy, we'll go ahead and finish up this tincture. It's very simple to do. We're just going to pour the 100 proof vodka into the jars all the way up to the very top. And you'll see why I have three jars or three bottles here in a moment. to the very tippy top. <laughs> Almost got away with one and a half bottles, not quite. And all the way to the very, very, very top. And I have these plastic lids. Um, you know, you've heard me say it before, they're food safe, they're BPA free, and best of all, they don't corrode, um, which is great in case you forget these in the back of your cabinet somewhere. So we're just gonna pop these on. Okay, and then we're going to give them both a really good shake And this is the start of our ginger tincture. It's going to sit in these jars in a dark cabinet where it's not, you know, it doesn't have the sun beating on them. Um, somewhere cool and dark. I mean, as cool as possible, right? It's summertime. We're gonna shake it every day. And in about eight weeks, we're gonna strain it. Here's our jar. Here's what it looks like up close. And I'm gonna make a label for it. Now, since I'm not selling these, I don't, you know, need a batch number or anything like that, but I do wanna know the date that I made it and what's in it. You'd be surprised how these do change color, um, all the different tinctures over time. So it's nice to just be 100% sure what is in your medicine cabinet. 
I use disposable labels. Um, they're really nice because once you're done with this jar, you're going to want to reuse it for, I don't know, canning your strawberry jam or whatever, or another tincture. Um, so I like to use these labels that wash right off in water. The only thing you have to be careful of is like there's a tiny bit of vodka still on the outside. If I touch the label, it's going to totally like mess up the writing and it's going to dissolve it. Um, so yeah, make sure your lid's on tight and make sure your hands are dry when you're fussing with these. Now that we have our labels, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how to strain it once it's done curing. I'm not going to show that to you in this video because I really want you to have this information right now, not two months from now. So in two months after this is done curing, you're going to filter out all of the ginger parts and be left with only the liquid tincture. I typically use a fine mesh sieve with a coffee filter inside or cheesecloth. That works really well too. And you'll just pour it in and then um, the ginger will be on the top side and the tincture will be on the underside. And you'll put the tincture, the liquid part, into a dark colored bottle. You can use the blue ones. I prefer the amber colored ones, but that's just me. And then you'll want to make sure you label your um, medicine dropper. So this one is motherwort. I'm just using it as an example for you um, to show you what it's going to look like in the end. Now that you know how to make a ginger tincture and you know how to strain it, I want to talk to you a little bit about why even make it in the first place. Like what's it used for? Ginger tincture is antiviral, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and antioxidant. It has so many more benefits than just nausea. However, it works amazing for nausea and motion sickness. And it does work for um, morning sickness. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, you guys, past my childbearing years. Morning sickness. It works for morning sickness. However, I do recommend that you use um, maybe not a tincture, but ginger itself works amazing for morning sickness. Um, if you're trying to stay away from alcohol because you're pregnant, I would use a different um, uh, version of of ginger. You can use a ginger tea. You can make that fresh or from dried. And also, um, just one note of precaution, um, studies have shown that if you have gallbladder disease, that it might not be a good idea for you to use ginger in these concentrated qualities. I would just suggest that you talk to your naturopath or your doctor about that if you do suffer from gallbladder disease before you embark on using a ginger tincture. So we know that ginger is good for the stomach, right? It's good for nausea, it's good for uh, a digestive aid, but did you know it's also good as a pain reliever? It works for headaches, menstrual pain. It's also great as liver support. Um, you can even use it for congestion. Uh, ginger tincture is amazing all around health support. Another great way to use ginger is dried but in an oil infusion to make a salve. Because ginger is so anti-inflammatory, ginger in an oil infusion is an excellent way to combat pain, um, arthritis pain as well as nerve pain. So many of you know and some of you don't, I have neuropathy in my feet and I have to use a prescription drug for that pain in order to be able to walk and stand here before you today, which praise God, I am excited that I can. However, there are plant allies that can really help us with that kind of nerve pain and ginger is one of those. We'll be making a, um, a ginger salve that has a couple of other herbs in it as well to help with nerve pain. So I hope you stay tuned for that. It might be a little while coming 
but just keep your eyes out for it. I think that our next video might be might be a garden tour. So I know you guys know that it's been raining here forever, even though it's summertime and the gardens here in Zone 8B have really struggled with this weather, but I want to show you what my garden is doing. She is really flourishing and she's beautiful. Last but not least, I just want to say um, as far as dosage goes on your ginger tincture, you're going to want to take approximately a dropper full. This is a one ounce jar. You want to take about one dropper full three times a day for things related to your stomach or your gut. When it comes to cancer and more severe ailments that you might be struggling with, you might need a higher dosage. And for that, I would want to refer you to your naturopath or your doctor to ask them what would be a safe and reasonable dosage for you because it's going to be higher than that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope it gives you confidence that you too can make your own medicine at home. If you have a suggestion or a critique or a comment or a compliment, please leave it down below in the comments. I do respond to every single comment on this channel because I value you. You are my friends, you are my community, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys all and I am going to hit the garden really quick and see what she has to bring me today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!